Hey there, it's your friend and your guy and your friendly neighborhood Linux gamer, Gardner. I've seen a few comments asking, Gardner, why did you stop mocking the mean comments in the openings of your videos? And honestly, it's because for the most part, there really haven't been that many mean comments lately. I, I'm serious when I say that I have the coolest community on YouTube, so thanks for that. My community is so cool that when I published my last video, people were worried that I was slurring my speech and my voice sounded different, and they reached out and they were like, what's going on? I just had a cold. I still haven't fully recovered. Uh, don't worry about it, guys. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern, though. I really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, it's been a minute since we talked about Steam Deck news, so let's do that. Here's some of the coolest things that are happening in the Steam Deck world. First up, Q2 begins shortly. So last Monday, March 28th, 2022, marks the end of quarter one Steam Deck reservations. If you were in quarter one 2022 and you still hadn't received your chance to order your Steam Deck, you'll want to check your email or log into the Steam client. The final quarter one email was sent out on Monday, and this means that next Monday is the first batch of quarter two emails being sent out. Next up, let's talk about Xbox Cloud Gaming. Xbox Cloud Gaming comes to the Steam Deck thanks to Microsoft's porting of Edge to Linux, but this hasn't come without controversy. The biggest controversy here being, why the hell would anyone in their right mind use a cloud gaming service? The, the second controversy, of course, being that Microsoft is not giving any credit to the community members who packaged Edge as a flat pack, which Edge as a flat pack is a necessary component of this setup process. Now, apparently you can also follow Microsoft's guide, install Edge, and then use Edge to play Stadia. Uh, but again, why would anyone do that? <laughs> Microsoft initially included some borked instructions on how to set up and configure Edge on SteamOS, telling users that they needed to unlock their immutable file system. Now, there's been some confusion about this. Uh, unlocking your immutable file system is not dev mode. Enabling dev mode is trivial. You can enable dev mode, disable dev mode. It doesn't matter. But unlocking your immutable file system, this is bad news. And this is a bad guide on Microsoft's part. If a guide ever tells you that you need to unlock your immutable file system on your Steam Deck, you need to delete that guide from the internet because it's not only wrong, it's dangerous. Unlocking your Steam Deck's file system can potentially make SteamOS unstable, it can cause issues when performing an upgrade, and any modifications that you make outside of your home directory or your SD card will be overwritten by SteamOS upgrades in the future. And Microsoft's initial instructions told you to do just that bad look on Microsoft. Now, they have actually fixed this since they released the original thing. It no longer tells you you need to unlock your file system. Um, but uh, yeah, just goes to show you that you can't even trust Microsoft with uh, instructions nowadays. And before we go on to the next story, if you're enjoying this video, if you are looking for more Steam Deck news in your life, maybe hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're interested in the content that I'm making here. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that I am focusing on, so hit that notification bell. Stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here. Next up, OBS Studio is now available on Steam. Now, this is more of me uh, trying to get the message out there to the OBS devs. Now, OBS Studio has been released on Steam, but it's interestingly not available for Linux yet, despite having a native build. And what's more, I was hoping that this would mean that we'd be able to stream from the Steam Deck, but unfortunately, we can't. I would love to see a Steam Deck build of OBS as a way to stream from the deck without needing to pipe the video output to another device. Uh, but as it is right now, we're not there yet. Um, OBS devs, if you see this, if you're watching, I really would love to be able to stream from my Steam Deck. And I'm not talking about streaming from desktop mode either. I'm talking about streaming from game mode. Please, there's a way to make that happen. I, I know that there is. All right, let's talk about EmuDeck. Now, EmuDeck is a tool that handles setting up your favorite retro console games inside of Steam. And this is really a fantastic tool that I've personally used to get my Nintendo Switch backups running on the deck, as well as many other backup ROMs. It's really easy to use as well. Just download the emulators that you plan to use through the Discover App Center, then run the EmuDeck launcher. Make sure that you choose the correct version of the EmuDeck launcher, either the SD or the internal storage version. Next, you're going to copy your ROMs and ISOs to the directory 
for each console you plan on emulating. And the Emudec tool is the thing that actually creates the correct directories for you. Then make sure that Steam is closed and then download and run the Steam Grid DB app image. This will scan your ROM directories, it'll find the appropriate posters and box art, and present you with a list of all of the games that it found. You can choose whatever key art or, or posters that you want here, and then you can hit the save button, and now you have access to your entire ROM collection from within game mode, effectively turning the Steam Deck's UI into an absolutely awesome emulation front end. It's pretty epic, honestly. I'm a huge fan of this tool, and I love how it works and how simple it really is. I've got about 20 gigs worth of ROMs, and most of them just work flawlessly through this tool. So kudos to the guys that put together Emudeck. It's great. All right, let's talk about something else. There are now nearly 2 thousand games on Steam ranked as playable or verified. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the Deck Verified program checks each title against four major playability categories. The first is input. Does the title have controller support? Does the game automatically invoke on-screen keyboards when necessary? And does the game show the correct button prompts? Next is display. Does the game support the Steam Deck's 1280 by 800 screen size or 720p? Is all the in-game text readable on the deck screen? And does the game's default graphic settings perform well on the deck? Next up is seamlessness. Does the game launch without showing any compatibility warnings? And if the game has a launcher, is it navigable with a controller? And finally, system support. If the game runs through Proton, are all its dependencies, including anti-cheat, compatible with Proton? In order for a game to be verified, Valve's official testers must answer yes to all of these questions. Games with a playable rank have answered yes to a majority of the questions, though not all. Valve has been working on ranking the entirety of the Steam catalog of games and software against the deck verified criteria. That means that Valve's going through all of the games on Steam and checking each one against these criteria. As of Tuesday, March 29th, there's nearly 2,000 playable and verified games on Steam. But there's been a growing chorus of voices, both large and small, saying that many verified games aren't performing as expected. Take, for instance, Linus Tech Tips. Linus has spoken out extensively about how, in the mid to late game of Horizon Zero Dawn, the title has moments where the frame rate drops below one frame per second. Similarly, I've had experiences where God of War will slow to a crawl and then eventually lock the system up completely while still playing sound effects and music. And other verified titles like Metal Gear Solid 5 simply won't launch at all. Which leads us to our next story. Valve is crowdsourcing again. Now, I've been a rather outspoken critic of crowdsourcing. Except in limited circumstances like Wikipedia, I think crowdsourcing is often at best poorly executed and at worst a crutch for laziness. And Valve has had a pretty terrible track record when it comes to crowdsourcing. Especially things like Steam Greenlight and user reviews. In the past, Valve has used crowdsourcing as a way to not have to fulfill their responsibilities as a platform holder. But to be fair, I can think of at least one way that Valve has successfully capitalized on crowdsourcing, and that would be the Steam Controller profile sharing scheme that they came up with. When I heard that Valve is now soliciting feedback from players about their experiences with verified titles, I kind of cringed. I was worried that they would go back to the ways of uh, relying on crowdsourcing as a crutch. But in spite of their bad relationship with crowdsourcing in the past, I think that this is actually a pretty good implementation. Asking users for feedback on Valve's in-house process for ranking games makes a lot of sense to me, especially if it helps them identify issues with their reviewing pipeline to make sure that they limit the number of games that actually get marked as verified, especially erroneously verified. Verified games should be the most exclusive group of titles. They should be rock solid in terms of stability and frame rate, and they should provide gamers with a sublime console-like experience. And if I'm being quite honest, that has just not been the case so far. Okay, next up, let's talk about SteamOS on the PlayStation 4. Now, I think that this is probably one of the coolest uh, developments to come out of uh, the Steam Deck's release. And I'm not sure that Shuhei Yoshida could have predicted this when he excitedly tweeted about God of War on the Steam Deck but you can now install SteamOS on a jailbroken PlayStation 4. According to Wololo.net, uh, PlayStation 4 senior Nazki has recently uh, released a build of SteamOS for the PS4. This is a nearly feature complete release, missing only a few components. SteamOS on PS4 includes 
the ability to use the uh, DualShock 4 as a trackpad, uh, Heroic Game Launcher is available, Lutris for every other game, uh, DXVK, VKD3D, Wine, the Steam Deck UI shortcut, Proton Up QT, and it can be updated through GameScope. There are a few known issues, namely the DualShock 4 is detected as a mouse and not a trackpad, but that's, this can be fixed. Uh, the Steam Deck UI doesn't open sometimes, and just a black screen, uh, but you can use keyboard commands to actually fix this issue. Now, Nasky has said that uh, most games run pretty smooth, and uh, having tested a few of them himself, including games like Xenoverse 2, which runs at 1080p 60 with medium settings, and Skyrim SE, which also runs at 1080p 60 with medium settings. So that's all the Steam Deck SteamOS news that's come out uh, in the last week or so. I'm very excited to see where this all goes. I would really love to see uh, more SteamOS on PlayStation 4 developments. I think that that's like such a, a, a fun idea. I'd also love to see more uh, development on EmuDeck. I think that that's a really cool project, uh, but I would like to know what you think. What projects or services would you like to see on the Steam Deck? Let me know down in the comments, or maybe I missed a story. Let me know if I missed one down below. But I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I want to give a special shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members, without whom I would not be able to do this. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support this show and help it grow, you can join the 100 plus strong Linux warriors over on Patreon or YouTube members. Uh, use the links below to get you started. But like I said, that's going to do it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.